Hi, I'm Nick, and in this video, we'll be exploring how to use ChatGPT for generating STLs for 3D printing. Whether you're a seasoned 3D printing enthusiast or a complete beginner, this video is sure to provide you with valuable insights into how ChatGPT can be used to generate open SCAD code for 3D printing. Now, we did let ChatGPT write its own introduction, and it's very optimistic. Let's get started. We have a lot to unpack here before we start firing up the Pro 3. But first, what exactly is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is a large language model trained by OpenAI that can generate human-like text based on a given prompt. It can understand natural language and generate text in response to questions or prompts. SCAD is a free and open source software tool used for creating solid 3D CAD models. It uses a programming language to describe the objects and shapes in the model instead of a graphical user interface like most traditional CAD software. Now, ChatGPT is a really impressive piece of software. It can do a lot of things. Having it write code is kind of something pretty new that AI has been able to do. There's a lot of work that goes into learning a CAD program, learning the ins and outs of how exactly to model. Potentially, ChatGPT would be able to learn these methods and then start generating code for you and then you would need zero experience on how the program actually works. It'd be a really, really impressive way to take a user who has never done any 3D printing before or never even considered additive manufacturing and use this model as a way to be a launch ramp into full production with, again, zero experience. So it does have a lot of potential here that we really, really want to get into, but we'll just start diving in and see what ChatGPT can do. In defining the design prompt, we need to define our dimensions, shapes, and features of the 3D object. So far, the first thing I wanted to do was uh, generate a model of hydrogen, right? So it'd be like a circle in the middle, a ring around it, and then a circle on the side. It's not that hard. And it basically just told me no, and then went through a couple of lists of like, here's how you could probably do that. Um, and then I asked for a cube again, so I generated the code for a cube. And then I asked it to do a double helix. Uh, so then first thing, it spit out all the code for a double helix. And if I copy that and drop it into OpenSCAD. So then we can go ahead and generate this and we get nothing. So we have lots of warnings there for unknown module sweep. And then I can actually go back into OpenSCAD and tell it that there's an error. It doesn't know the sweep module. So it says, OK, sweep is actually not built into default OpenSCAD. I apologize. And then it gives me new code that's trying to do it without using a sweep. So it gives me something else. It lets me know that it's using a helix turn instead of a sweep. And then so it's just giving me extra feedback. I can go ahead and copy that back into OpenSCAD and then generate that. And we still get nothing. Um, but then, so it throws another error and it says unable to convert points of that thing. So it's describing again. We'll go ahead and copy over our last code and generate that. And now we get something. It's still really far from a double helix, but I do kind of get the premise of what it's trying to do but it is still really far away from what a usable result would be that I'd kind of expect to work with. So I went with a different direction then I asked it to make a phone stand for Galaxy S8. Uh, the interesting here is that it pulled up the phone height width and depth right away and then it started generating the rest of that. And the explanation down here is that it's going to have the dimensions of a phone and it uses those to make the phone stand. It creates the base of a phone and then subtracts a smaller cube from a larger cube. And then it creates the phone support by making two cylinders, one for the base and one for the holder. The phone can be placed in the holder with the bottom resting on the smallest cylinder and the top resting against the largest cylinder. So it kind of sounds like it's a box on, on like a peg on the bottom and then a peg on the back, kind of. Um, but then if we go ahead and put that into OpenSCAD, we get this, which it has a little bit of ways to go. So that's the first part. We'll let ChatGPT generate a text response for our design, and then it'll give us a code that we can put into OpenSCAD for generating a 3D object. So what I have here is after working with ChatGPT for a while, I've gotten it to a point where trying to make the middle section of this block here as you kind of add this on after we've asked it to create a base. And we have a little bit here where it's trying to create the extra middle section, but you can see I've, I've gone through and kind of reiterated with this section of code. I asked it to uh, change it and put it more in the middle so it's not off to the side. And then I wanted to try and remove a cylinder from the center of the middle bar that's trying to put in. So it's kind of a T section there, and that's code that it gave me directly. So we do that, and it generates this section here where it has the middle bar, but it also has the cylinder hole just kind of 
planted in the center there in that section and just moved it over. But it's not in the correct orientation. So if we edit that again and then have it run this, we see that now uh, I've reoriented the uh, cylinder in there in the middle and now it cuts out that section and that cylinder is in the correct area. Specifically, what we had to go through and change were things like translating the position of where the cylinder lands. And then I also had to include a rotate here, that rotate method, uh, to actually orient the hole in the correct direction. Yeah, so then a couple of these, it tries to work with the same variables and reuse those, um, but it didn't quite understand the whole thing that I was going for. So I did a little bit more writing and tweaking that section, and then that actually gives us our final part. So we'll refine the design, and this can come with some additional steps. However, ideally, OpenSCAD parts shouldn't have any issue exporting the STLs. Uh, we might need to talk about repairing and stitching LTLs again later, but there shouldn't be too much to refine. We can use the OpenSCAD as a stepping stone to import into another program for cleanup if we need to. So our third step is refining the design, and ideally it shouldn't have too many flaws and OpenSCAD parts shouldn't have any issues exporting to STLs. Now, you can use it as a stepping stone to import into, say, a secondary software, and then use that for cleanup if you need to. For these parts, we're going to use a Pro 3 equipped with our new Hyper FFF upgrade kit. Adding the upgrade kit allows the machine to reach new levels of production by significantly cutting print time while still maintaining high precision. We have everything dialed in so that we can produce any part at the same high quality at a moment's notice. Now it's more about showing the limitations of the method and the part that I'm working with here is simple because I'm working with an AI that hasn't really been trained to do open SCAD code. ChatGPT does a lot more language based sounding like a natural person. It's still in a bit of the early stages, but there's a lot of improvement that can be made as the AI will continue to learn how to generate this code in ways that make the most sense. So in conclusion, ChatGPT can be a really useful tool for generating STL files. It does have a little bit of back and forth for when you're generating code and you may need to rewrite a little bit of its syntax, but it does generate STL files. This has a lot of potential for basically making the design process require zero experience, and I think that's really, really cool. It just has a lot to go before it gets there. So maybe we'll revisit it in the future and see what kind of STLs it can make later. And I think honestly, it has nowhere to go but to improve. I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens with ChatGPT and you know the rest of this industry and everything else going forward. But I think it's gonna do it for us on this one. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. As always, I'm Nick, and we'll see you in the next one.